Hello, thank you for joining us on this Monday afternoon. I'm Jordan Taylor. Let's take a look at our headlines for the day. The U.S. is trying to slow Israel's plans for a ground invasion. We'll have more on why there is growing concern the conflict can widen. Colleges around the state celebrate Save Our Students Week with the rollout of a drug that can save lives. More on this in nine minutes. And a common misconception could be putting women at risk for ovarian cancer. Later, we'll have a look at the screening tools doctors recommend. But first, we have a look at whether it is Monday and after an amazing weekend. I'm hoping we can kind of repeat that today. Well, we're going to see some changes, mm -hmm. Journey. We're going to start to get a little bit warmer than what we felt yesterday. In fact, if you've been outside over the last hour or so, you've probably felt that warm up already. Right now, temperatures around the state largely in those 70s. Some of us already in the 80s this afternoon. It's 80 in Pine Bluff and 81 in Monticello. Little Rock right now sits at 77 degrees, holding on to some 70s uh, for a pocket of areas here in parts of north central Arkansas. Now, as for the rest of of today. Expect that thermometer to continue warming up, probably heading all the way to 85 in Little Rock. Some locations in South Arkansas very well could see some upper 80s in that part of the state. It's been mostly cloudy today and that's not expected to change, though there will be a few breaks in the clouds every once in a while, giving you a, a peak of sunshine. Uh, temperature wise, probably going to be nice and warm the next couple of days. Rain chances, however, on the increase the second half of this week all leading up to a pretty big pattern change. And what that means for us, a better chances of rain, some of the best we've seen in quite some time, and a pretty big swing in the temperatures going into Halloween. It may very well be much cooler. We'll look ahead to that here coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Scott, thank you. Well, we begin with developments in Pine Bluff. Two separate shootings leave multiple people injured and two dead. Now police are searching for two murder suspects in both shootings. Officers are urging people to stay alert. Several suspects are now behind bars, though, but police are still looking for 21 year old Deontay Coleman, who you see here. He's considered armed and dangerous and is wanted in a daily shooting at a gas station on North University Drive just after midnight on Sunday. Police say a group of people were shooting at each other, killing a 23 year old man. Another man is in critical condition and two others were hurt but are expected to be okay. Police quickly arrested three men and each are charged with capital murder. Meanwhile, just a few hours later, police responded to another shooting that appears to be unrelated to the first. Police say the suspect, 22 year old Datrion Morris is still on the run after allegedly shooting a man who got in the middle of a family fight. Well, Central Arkansas is mourning the loss of longtime Pulaski County Judge Buddy Valines. Valines. He passed away on Saturday night at 76 years old. Valines served as county judge for more than two decades from 1991 to 2014. Two of the big projects he oversaw were the construction of the Big Dam Bridge and the Two Rivers Park Bridge. Pulaski County Judge Barry Hyde took over when Valines retired in 2014. Hyde released a statement saying in part, quote, we are where we are today with our trails and county amenities thanks to Buddy. He's the best judge we've ever had, and I'm proud to have known him and learned from him, end quote. We're turning now to the story that still has Arkansas sports fans talking this afternoon. Razorback offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach Dan Enos is out of the job. The development comes after the Hogs fell to Mississippi State over the weekend. Their sixth loss in a row. Former Ohio State quarterback and wide receivers coach Kenny Galton will be taking over play duties, calling duties for the rest of the Hogs football season. And we're going to have more from head football coach Sam Pittman tonight at 5 and 6. Israel's defense forces say they hit more than 300 Hamas targets in Gaza over the past 24 hours. They have also begun limited ground raids in the Hamas controlled Palestinian territory ahead of an unexpected or expected ground invasion. Nellie Brand reports. Massive explosions could be seen in Gaza Monday as Israel steps up airstrikes against Hamas targets. This Gaza resident says last night was the hardest night so far, adding that he evacuated to an area in the south that was supposed to be safe. 
nearby aid workers sorted through a shipment of desperately needed supplies following a deal to let in some humanitarian aid to the millions of Palestinian civilians living in the besieged territory. It's just a fraction of all of the humanitarian assistance that is actually needed over there. CBS News has learned the Biden administration has repeatedly tried to get Israel to delay a ground invasion of Gaza to prioritize the distribution of humanitarian aid and the release of the hostages Hamas is holding. We are very worried about them and about all the other 212 kidnapped prisoners. Concern is growing. The violence could escalate into a wider regional conflict. In the West Bank Sunday, Israel targeted what it says was an underground terror route beneath a mosque. And in Israel's north, residents evacuated as Israel continues to trade fire almost daily with Iran-backed Hezbollah fighters in Lebanon. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. The White House says President Biden and Israel's Prime Minister have agreed to a continued flow of limited humanitarian aid from Egypt into Gaza for the millions of civilian Palestinians living in the territory. Well, medical experts agree that stress causes unnecessary harm to our bodies. And the war between Israel and Hamas is upping that stress, a situation individuals cannot control that's creating high levels of tension and anxiety for many people. Stress has been shown to increase blood pressure, disrupt meta me metabolic health, compromise the immune system, and cause sleep and mood disorders. Medical professionals say focusing on the little things can have profound effects on body and mind. Um, pouring yourself a warm cup of coffee, appreciating the sunrise when you wake up, reading a good book, or writing um, in your gratitude journal. What this does is it un there's a called the undoing hypothesis where it helps bring down and help you recover from that stress and build up your reserves so that you can be stronger and more fortified. He is my baby. According to Dr. Tugadi, cultivating positive emotions will help regulate psychological activity and limit the negative effects of stress. And more health news. Today starts the final week of Car Ties Initiative to expand access to breast cancer screenings. They're continuing their mammograms and muffins event at the Cancer Center in Pine Bluff. A quick, convenient chance to get screened and enjoy breakfast while you're at it. It runs from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays and from 8 to noon on Saturday. You can pre-register and find more details online on the CARTI website. Now, there is no test, though, to screen for ovarian cancer, but a new survey finds many women mistakenly believe pap smears can detect it. Briley Blackburn has more on how that may put them at risk. Katia Lezen has been diagnosed with ovarian cancer twice, the first time when she was 46. My kids at the time were 11, 15, and 17, and I was facing the very real possibility that I may not be able to see them into adulthood. Ovarian cancer has a 50% survival rate over five years. If it's caught at stage one, those odds improve to more than 90%. But a new nationwide survey found 7 in 10 women wrongly believe pap smears test for ovarian cancer. Pap smear screens for cervical cancer only. Dr. Efi Stitt says because guidelines now recommend pap smears every three to five years, too many women skip annual checkups that could catch potential early symptoms of ovarian cancer, like pelvic pain, bloating, or low appetite. By not being seen annually, we lose the opportunity to screen for some of these subtle presentations. For those with family history, genetic testing can identify risk. Lezen carries the BRCA1 gene mutation that increases the chance of multiple cancers, including breast cancer. It's knowledge that can help with treatment and prevention. I elected to have a prophylactic double mastectomy that was fully paid for by my insurance company because of my mutation. More than 10 years after her first diagnosis, she is living proof you can survive ovarian cancer. Let's arm ourselves with the right information and be proactive about our health before you get that call that says, I don't know how to tell you this. She says all women should see their doctor every year. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Well, according to the National Cancer Institute, nearly 20,000 women will be diagnosed with ovarian cancer this year. 
Well, today colleges around Arkansas will recognize the start of Save Our Students Week, celebrating the rollout of naloxone, the drug used to reverse the effects of an opioid overdose. New data from the Arkansas Center for Health Improvement shows prescriptions have quadrupled since Act 651 was passed in 2021, requiring the naloxone to be prescribed to patients who receive high doses of opioids. But while access to the life-saving drug has expanded, some pharmacists say it's not all positive. Doctors are being either required or, or encouraged to um, prescribe naloxone with all opioid prescriptions. But also we um, have seen an uptick in street drug usage and so that has resulted in an increased need for naloxone to be available to EMTs um, in hospitals and emergency rooms. Naloxone or Narcan can be prescribed or purchased over the counter. Well, speaking of schools, coming up a school with sustainability as its mission. We'll take a look at how students are training to care for the planet now and into the future. Hey, taking a live look outside from our view 11. It is a warm fall day. It's going to get warmer this afternoon. We'll take a look at the latest forecast there, but I'm also tracking a pretty big cool down. We'll have a look at your seven day forecast coming up after the break.